<laughs> this is really awkward. <sighs> okay, well, no, <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> like talking on my channel like I'm pretty much doing something or I am putting music over a montage of videos and just editing that but for this video I really do have to just sit down and talk to y'all I eventually want to share my career life with y'all and it almost seems like a movie like just the whole story I've been telling just my close-knit of family and friends and it's been a long journey I mean this has started all the way since high school so just to give you all some background information I have my like talking points here so let's just start with what I want to do um, in high school there was this class that was like a mentorship internship class I guess and it was only allowed for juniors and seniors so when I was a junior, I interviewed to be accepted into the class, and I didn't make it. But I actually am really happy I didn't make it, <laughs> because at the time, I thought I wanted to be a physical therapist, which if you know me now, like, that is completely opposite from anything I want to do. I'm glad I didn't make it junior year, because then I would have already done, like, a mentorship with a physical therapist and probably wasted their time and my time. So in the end, it was a blessing in disguise. And in this video, you're gonna see a lot of blessings, like just timing is everything. Like it's a reason I didn't make it that year. It was just God's way of telling me like, look, you still need to figure out what you wanna do. This isn't your passion. So that being said, the next year, so my senior year in high school, I figured it out. I was like, I want my work to not even be considered work. I want it to be a passion of mine. I need to love it. And I got really down to the core of what I love, and that was music, specifically live music. I'm talking concerts, I'm talking festivals, like Beyonce, Bruno. I was already, I was already been to a lot of concerts. I'll get to that later, but um, I started noticing like before the show started, I would start just looking around the arena. Like you can feel the excitement, the jitters, like the butterflies, anticipation before the show starts. And just like looking at all these different people in the crowd and how like all these people gathered together just for this one artist. It's literally a form of magic, I think. Like it's so magical before every concert. The fact that it can bring people together and these memories you hold on to forever. Like, I still remember my first concert, which was KISS, and I saw them when I was 10 years old, which I know that's a really out there for the first concert. You know, a lot of people are like, oh, mine was the Cheetah Girls, or mine was Hannah Montana, or like, no, mine was KISS, okay? <laughs> and my mom took me when I was 10, and she was like, you're gonna see some things, you know, if you have questions, ask me, but I was thrown into it, okay? What was I talking about? I don't even know. Anyway, I was thrown into concerts from a young age and I just loved the energy around it. And then eventually I started going to artists that inspired me. So Beyonce is one of my favorite artists. Um, I'm talking like legendary, iconic performers. She is our modern day, like Michael Jackson, Prince, like that level of being iconic and historic with her performances. So. After seeing Beyonce with my mom for the first time, I was like, this is what I want to do. I want to be on the team that helps put it together. I want to be either with the arena, or I want to be with the venue, or I want to be on the artist side, like touring. So, senior year, I went in, I interviewed for the class, and it was like a total different career path. And I think just by the fact that it was so different, and also like, she could see my passion and why I really wanted to do this, I made the class. Being in Dallas, I reached out to American Airlines Center, the AT&T Stadium with the Dallas Cowboys. I reached out to Live Nation in Dallas, iHeart uh, I Media, iHeart Radio, I guess, iHeart Media in Dallas. And yeah, I started constructing interviews and they would reach back out to me. I was like, hey, I'm in this high school class where I shadow people and learn. And yeah, I had a lot of experiences. I got to work like a 
Cowboys game and see kind of like the sports side. I would do game day stuff and like parties in the venue. Of course, my family loved that because they love Cowboys. Um, but it wasn't for me, you know, I was still looking because I was like, at the end of the day, you're picking one of these people that you're shadowing to be your mentor. So then after that, I did American Airlines Center and it was more of like the Mavericks, game days, interviews, stuff like that, behind the scenes. And I still was, I mean, I loved all these experiences and I'm blessed that I was able to do it in high school. But it still just wasn't lighting that fire inside me until I met with my mentors in Live Nation. I'm not gonna get into like an ISM thing, but they helped me grow and before college to even get where I want to be and I already had all this experience, which I was like, great. I need to be ahead of the game because <laughs> I am playing softball in college, which unfortunately means I am not going to have a lot of time for internships and you know, it was bittersweet, like obviously a plus because I was getting my college paid for. And then the downside was all that time that extra students have, of course, they can do internships, get one like up, get a job ready after college, you know. So it was kind of freaking me out, but I didn't really think of it at the time until like my junior year. So I go into college freshman year, you know, having fun, playing softball. It's just, you know, just being a college kid and not really thinking about my career, um, like internship wise, but my major was in entertainment management and then a minor in radio, television and film. So the fact that my school had a major like that there was honestly another another sign from God, like this is where you're supposed to be, like, cause that is such a, you know, unique major. It's not at every school, it's not offered everywhere. And the fact that they had their own program there with professors that are in the business. When I tell you, these professors are in the business. Like I had Beyonce's dad as a professor my freshman year. I had multiple professors that are in the industry, like killing it. Because it's funny because the dream has always been for me to move to LA. Like always, I love Los Angeles. Music capital, hello, I'm in entertainment. Los Angeles, the beach, the record shops, the hiking, the mountains, and then the lowrider, Chicano, East LA. Like I just love it, right? So one of my other options for softball was LMU, which is Loyola Marymount in Los Angeles. It's like a private Catholic school and I mean, I would have been broke, let's just say that. But again, like I prayed on it and I'm so grateful because my mom made it possible that I went on like a visit there just to say like, okay, like I did everything I could. They messaged me like the coach. So like I went to a camp. So like I honestly did everything that I had to do. It was just God's plan for me and all the signs. Like if I was to go there, I would have needed another year of a foreign language and I didn't have that being a senior, so it was just the signs showing me that I was meant to go to TSU in Houston, which it was like an amazing offer there as compared to like, you know, being in debt already after college in California. So again, all of God's signs and timing has just showed me like, I was meant to be at Texas Southern University, which is the greatest thing that I have ever done. I'm like, I talk too much, cause now I wanna go into like TSU and why I love it, but uh, I'll get to another video on that, but no, I'll talk about it now. Texas Southern is an HBCU in Houston, Texas, and I was blessed to play softball there, like I said, for four years, and I met my best friends there, I've met amazing people there in my life, and honestly, like the biggest blessing out of everything was my major and who I met at the school. Like, that was God's, like looking back at it now, 22, like, as opposed to when I'm 18, like, if I could just tell myself, like, trust it, like, Houston is where you're supposed to be, everything's gonna work out, like, I would just tell myself, like, go, you're gonna have the best time, and it's gonna pay off. But anyway, so I'm going to school there, I have all these amazing professors, I'm learning about the business, and I'm building these relationships with each professor that I have. So, like, that's one thing I would definitely say, like, no matter what, uh, I would introduce myself personally to the professors just so they knew my face, they knew my name, what I wanted to do, because 
I mean, we had amazing professors at that school and the fact that some people just wouldn't take advantage of that to network or like shatter them, help them anytime they need, like it's crazy to me. Like, like TSU has so many like, oh my gosh, opportunities within specifically the School of Communications, all those professors and opportunities there. You just need to put yourself out there and network and make sure they remember your name. So anyway, going through school and then I'm getting most of my credits done. I just need like those last few credits to graduate, which is in my major internship classes and just, you know, really focused on my major. <laughs> then COVID hit. Obviously it put the whole world on pause, but specifically for me, it was just a little bit more scary because I mean, concerts like that ended everything. You know, other businesses, they would do this or work from home, but I mean, there's no way like with live events. It was definitely scary because I didn't know what was gonna happen. I was <laughs> like, did I pick the wrong career? Like, is concerts ever gonna come back? Am I not gonna have a job right out of college? Because I mean, some companies were making cuts to like 50% of their work staff. So I did an internship with actually one of my professors which was great because I got to work from home. I was still in Dallas and they were in Houston. I was doing a lot of like virtual stuff for them, a lot of emails back and forth. But COVID, it really affected my career. And you know, I went through a lot of emotions and <sighs> I've always been really like spiritual, but I think specifically going through all of this with my career and COVID and being tested in my faith, like I only grew stronger and I feel way more mature as a person. Like, I'm so much more powerful now, if that makes sense in a way, that I know that nothing can really get to me or break me. Just because going through all of this and still finding a way to get my dreams to come true and getting exactly what I want, that, you know, God always has a plan for me. And it's always possible, anything's possible because I went through a whole pandemic, my career and like my job specifically was hit the hardest with COVID and I still found a way. So in the end, you know, it was just trusting in God's plan and I'll go into that more, <laughs> but I'm skipping all over the place. But during the pandemic, I had my first job, like first like actual or I got paid for helping for an event. And it was interesting because the first job I did was in the pandemic. He just reached out to me while I was in Dallas and he was like, hey, like I'm doing an event, kind of like virtual concert for Houston. It's called H-Town Votes Live. And all the shows are gonna be streamed. We're gonna like record it. All the bands will come separate at a time. Like, so, you know, with COVID regulations and stuff. And he was like, would you wanna help or be a co-producer? So I was like, yes, like, and I wasn't even thinking like I was getting paid. I was like, okay, yes, like any work is work, especially right now in the pandemic. Like I'm just trying to get more experience. So it was like a multi-camera event or footage, I guess. And so at the end, it's like this huge um, show that we did and it was all to promote minorities in Houston to vote in that election, which was so important. And it was something I was passionate about. I was like, it's for a great cause. We were a great mesh, a great team. So that was my first gig that I got paid for, recognized for, he put my name on like the credits and stuff. And I'll actually link the full show below. It's on YouTube, so if y'all wanna watch it. But um, that was like my first gig where I was like, wow, like this feels good, like I'm being rewarded for my work. And after that, it just kept coming, like more opportunities. So I went back for my senior year of college. That same guy that I worked with, with the H-Town Votes Live, he reached out to me again. He was like, hey, like, I'm doing a 50th anniversary birthday celebration for Selena Quintanilla, which y'all know me. I mean, or if y'all have seen the video, I'll put it down below or whatever. But it was a celebration for her, what would have been her 50th birthday. But obviously, I did it. I was more than happy to because the fact that I could have a hand in producing this event for her, like in honor of her and her legacy. So. That was another video I featured on my channel, if y'all want to go see that, but in the end, I did that, and then uh, one professor emailed me about an opportunity to be a Grammy U student, which is like um, being a member for the Grammys, the Recording Academy, and like networking with professionals in the area, 
So that was huge. Like, I mean, it's the Grammys. So I was like, yeah, I'll do it. Like, so <laughs> I was the representative for Texas Southern, me and one other classmate. And we both got paired up with our mentors and mine was from the Kessler in Houston, which is a venue. And that's kind of how I got um, set up after college. But that's another story. I'll get to that later. And then, um, you know, I just kept networking, keeping in contact with my professors and things were still kind of shut down because, you know, I was trying to get hooked up with House of Blues or like started a venue like right after college, but uh, it's just not, it wasn't meant for me. Like people still weren't really hiring or taking on like as far as people at venues or like, you know, Live Nation, House of Blues, those corporate companies, like it's just very, I didn't have an in, where I did have an in, it's just, it wasn't meant for me. That's how I look at it now. Like, it was a blessing in disguise. It wasn't the right time. It wasn't the right place. I wasn't meant to be there. So I go back home after graduating. And this is when the process starts, which was a test on me, a test on my faith, a test on my patience and just how bad I really want it so I go home and you know I'm trying to be in Houston but everything's pointing me like okay no like nothing's really opening up so then I reached out to one of my connections in Nashville with Live Nation again for touring nothing was really open you know companies they weren't really hiring they weren't looking for especially touring well no Okay, I'm going all over the place. How do I say this? So eventually when I was just trying to look for a job, I was like, let me go ahead and reach out to one of my professors. And <laughs> he gave me the biggest blessing. I had an informal interview on the phone at the time when I was back home in Dallas. And he just threw me on the phone with a very big opportunity in Los Angeles which was essentially with a record company and I don't want to be like too detailed because I don't want to like you know I'm still keeping it sacred to me but it's with a record company in Los Angeles and he was just connecting me with that person in LA getting them to know me and I mean they took me way off guard they called me at like not 9 30 10 at night I mean, I was literally in the living room with my mom, so like, I had no idea that they were gonna ask me. I didn't even know it was like an informal interview at the time. And <laughs> so he was just hyping me up to this other connection. And so he already kind of knew a sense of who I was, what I'm about. It was just now getting to know me and talking to me personally over the phone. And so he asked me from A to Z, I mean, growing up in Frisco, to going to school to TSU, to why do I want to do this? What's my work ethic like? What do I love? My passions? Why do I want to do it? He knew everything about me from the end of the interview. Like I talked about my family, how I was a miracle baby. He learned everything about me in that one phone call, like my whole life. It just came out perfectly. Uh, I didn't really stutter. I was confident. You know, my energy really came through in the phone call perfectly and his too I felt his energy immediately and so eventually he's just talking to me like so how'd you do this how was I able to balance playing softball in school to being valedictorian to like all this and like a moment just came through me where I was like it was faith like it, I gave like two answers my religious kind of spiritual answer and then like the realism answer I guess and then I kind of sh started sharing more personal stuff like I was like my vision board I've been big on vision boards since high school but I really started placing an emphasis on them to my career when I was in quarantine and what's crazy is stuff on that vision board has become in reach <laughs> when I tell you like I'll show y'all in a little bit well let me finish the story but I started telling him that and he was like, look, I love you. Like, it's no question. Like, you're the one, we love you. I can feel your energy through the phone. Like, let's keep this going. We'll be in contact. So I got his number and then he was like, tell me like your craziest dream. Like, it, nothing's too crazy. Just tell me what's your dream. 
And I was like, Beyonce's Coachella performance, have you seen that? And he was like, oh yeah, of course, of course. I was like, well, that is one of my biggest inspirations watching that. Like every time I see that or rewatch it, I get chills. Like I feel it in my heart, in my body. Like I just get that fire in me again. Like I want to be a part of that. Those iconic performances that people just remember. And it's Beyonce, my idol. Like I just want to be able to do that with her, bring it to life, like a whole creative work of art through a performance. And he was like, I, when I told you, I literally, I started shaking when he said this. He was like, you know what? It's funny you said that because one of my good friends was the one who worked with Beyonce on the Coachella performance. And like, I started, like, I was, I had to play it cool, but I was like, I even looked at my mom and I was like, like, and my mom was just like, praise, like, you know, like the Lord, like that's God right there. And I tell you, like, I was like, oh my God, like, I almost felt like a relief and just like, okay, Emma, like, trust it, like, you're good. And so that was kind of like the end of the call. Like, it was just to me, like, okay, you're on the right path. You're in reach. Like, you have a foot in the door. Like, and so we end the call and it's just us now. Like, we're keeping in contact and um, they were like, enjoy your summer, but stay ready. Enjoy your summer, do what you gotta do, cause when you get in this, it's gonna be go, go, go. I was thinking, all right, it's summer. <laughs> I went to New York, you know, I'm spending time with family, friends, but I'm very like, oh, like I just want it. I, I'm ready to go, go, go. I don't like standing still for too long. <sighs> when I tell you, this was the hardest part of the whole thing. Like, oh, if I could just, express to you how bad I wanted it that should that should tell you how bad it was hurting me that I just had to wait to get it not hurting me but it was teaching me really to get to where I am now because I had to learn patience I had to learn faith I had to learn just I had to mature before I got where I wanted which I'm grateful for Maybe over four to five months, it was just here and there, some text or a couple phone calls like, oh, telling him what I've been doing, you know. Uh, not like a solid, like, yeah, this is the next step, but just good to hear from you, you know, keeping in contact, keep it up, or like, you know, just trusting the process. But he was texting me, he was responding, he was in communication with me, like that's the big thing. And after the first two months, I was like, okay, like, I'm not just going to sit around waiting for this. Like, I'm going to explore my options. I'm going, not a full-time job, because I didn't want to be tied down to, like, being in Dallas forever. Or, like, what if I get an offer and then I can't leave because I'm in this contract? So I started doing part-time work. So I was a stagehand and a stage tech in training at the Kessler. And I learned a lot, like I learned the proper setup for the stage, I learned how to deal with the artists, get them on stage, on and off, and what they needed in their dressing rooms, or just stuff like that. Like, it's just another thing added to my resume. And they would pay me, so I was saving up at the same time. And once I kind of got like, I was like, okay, I want something else. This was like the crazy one, which <laughs> my other video, again, with being a radio host, I was like, I have a minor in radio, TV, and film. Like, why not, like, before I start doing what my major is with entertainment, venues, touring, and production management, why not explore radio for a little bit? I love music, I love the station. So I reached out to them. I was a, uh, well, I currently am still an on-air host every Wednesday. So I do that, and then when the radio station has events, I'm doing that too. So it's like hand in hand, it's perfect. This is the part that like literally, uh, it just, it doesn't feel real until I'm there. It was just an ongoing process of me slowly getting rid of each negative thought and like all those doubts and fears. Every time I would feel that again, I would just turn to like my faith and journaling and manifesting and my rosary and just bettering myself whenever those fears kicked in. My first entry is like when I was still in school, like February. And as to now, or when I got the good news, 
September 16th. Like that's a long journey. But this whole journal like has it in here, the dedication, the I literally manifested this like for so long. I started focusing my energy towards bettering myself and becoming even more spiritual. And I got a call again from my professor. And I was like, look, like I'm going to LA in October to meet with him in person, face to face. And I just want your opinion, your advice on how to approach this. Like I was like basically saying, telling him like, look, when I go, I'm going to discuss with him that I am ready to obtain a job. Like I want to work with him, even if it's not in touring immediately, even if it's helping him with management or helping him, whatever, I want to be in. And he stops me and he goes, oh, Emma, like, you're in, like, that's not the question. And like, I was like, <laughs> I just felt relief. And like, after this phone call, guys, like I literally, I was in the car with my mom and dad and it was on speaker and they heard it. Like I, I cried in the car just cause how bad you want something and just all the work and like the faith paying off and just seeing it, like seeing God's plan finally with your own eyes, it's just like, it's beautiful. He was like, I'm literally talking to him later, right after we get off the phone, like, you're the person we want. He loves how hungry you are. He was like, you're a Latina, you're a woman. You know, it just looks good overall. And he was like, you're the one we want. There's no question about it. Like, <laughs> this is the part that got me. Like, they were like, you are in what we call the process. And they were like, everyone in the entertainment industry has, got, has gone through this. And we were testing you. We were looking if you were going to give up and just fold or not reach out or not do anything or get complacent. He was like, we love that you were doing this. And then you're on a radio. You were doing part-time. You're helping out with this. Like, you stayed hungry. You stayed on it. You know what you want. I just feel so much more powerful. Like, I know... I wasn't meant to get this until I've matured to this point. So not only like, I was over here waiting on God, like send me, send me to LA, like I'm ready, I'm ready. And like when on the opposite, God was looking at me like, I'm waiting on you, I'm waiting on you to trust me. I'm waiting on you to, you know, grow in faith. I'm waiting for you to discover yourself more as a person, to just believe in the process and mature more before I send you over there by yourself like you need to become this version of you before you begin your journey and I was like you know what now looking back I was like God gave me time he gave me time to relax he gave me time to enjoy you know being young being with friends my family he gave me time to learn he gave me time to just to grow and I wouldn't <laughs> I wouldn't change a thing, obviously. And so basically, I am getting ready for this coming October to go to LA and meet, you know, my connection out there and meet the team and see the offices and just, uh, it's not gonna feel real until I'm like there and I eventually move. But as of now, I am moving to LA. <laughs> I can't even say it. I am moving to Los Angeles, California. And this has been a big goal of mine since like high school. And it's like, I'm glad I'm going now, 22. I know what I want. I know my morals, my character, my spirituality, the culture. I know more about myself than I did when I was 18. I was a baby, like everything has a plan. There's a reason I didn't go to school there. There's a reason I went to school in Houston, a better opportunity than I would have ever imagined or dreamed of for my career, like <laughs> literally, God, like, I mean, I can't make this up, like the Beychella thing, like, let me, let me grab my vision board. Okay? Like, I literally made this in quarantine. Okay. So there's Beychella and the palm trees. And then just like the passion, and, like photos that inspire me. A lion, cause I'm a Leo. Just words that inspire me. Keep going, keep going. Hollywood. And I've had this in my room. Even when I went to Houston, I took it just to see it every day and visualize it. The dream I want. Oh, 
I started journaling. Like I'll show you some of these entries. I mean, they're personal, but like I am moving to Los Angeles. I am touring. I am trusting in God. Now I know anything's possible for me. Like I have that power. Shoot, I'm manifesting everything and anything I want because I can get it. And y'all can too. Like, please do not give up. Like that is, no, like fear and doubt controls people. Like, don't let that grow in your mind. And like, once you put those seeds of like doubt and fear, they just grow. So it's about keeping positive thoughts, positive affirmations, and just staying true to yourself and what you want. Like, don't let anybody defer you. And obviously, the biggest person is yourself. Because the moment it gets hard, there's a chance for you to just give up. And we ain't doing it. Reading some of these is very, like, it just makes me smile. Because I'm like, I literally did this. And I would just also give gratitude for like what I did have. Like I'd be like, I'm thankful for God giving me time with my family. I'm thankful for God giving me a weekend with my grandparents, you know? Like just patience and faith and like trusting the process. And I would even say I'm learning patience. I'm, I'm learning to grow in faith. I'm thankful for this. Like I'm thankful for this time I have because Everything has a reason. I also read this book, which is, let's see if you can see that. It's All In Your Head by Russ. And then another book that has changed my life. When I kid you not, the day I started reading this next book, I, the day I started it, I got the call with the good news. And like, I I finished the book. I finished both of the, both of the books actually, but, um. I lended the second book to my mom <laughs> currently. So let me see actually if it's here, if I can show y'all. I don't know if she took it, so hold on. This book, guys, The Four Agreements. Please ignore my nails. Oh, I just noticed that. I peeled off the gel. Okay, don't. I'm waiting to get them done before LA, okay? I just, <laughs> please don't touch my nails. I love this book because it ties in spirituality with like the universe and the moon and manifestation with God. I can read a couple quotes just to explain how it ties in together and how I've mixed like my manifestation and like moon rituals with, you know, like praying the rosary every night with my mom and lighting my prayer candles and, you know, just meshing it and just growing all together because I feel empowered and I just, it feels good. Like I put energy into things. I put love into everything. I'm getting rid of all that poison and you know negativity and fear and doubt. And it's really powerful. You you kind of become more aware after reading this. And yes, you're not gonna like wake up the next day and be like this perfect person. It takes time. But just being aware and recognizing stuff is like the first step. Like I'm still growing. My mom's still. We're all. But just reading this. It's a great read and you're gonna grow as a person. Limitations and boundaries are put up by dreams by non-believers, quitters, and bitter people who didn't have the balls to go after their own dreams. If that ain't the truth, and this is by Russ. So like, I loved, he actually read this book and then he made his own book, kind of centered more about music and his career in music. So I was like, oh, that's perfect. And in one chapter he even talks about the process of being patient, like, which I already went through. Of course, fears and doubts are natural, but day by day I'm getting better and growing in my faith as a person, growing as a woman, and yeah, anything is possible, guys. So I'm glad I kind of took the time to make this video. Again, I do not like speaking on camera. I feel really awkward, but I'm going to edit this so that it somewhat seems not cringy. And hopefully the more I talk like this to the camera, I'll get more comfortable. But forgive me if there's some cringy parts or if it seems rushed or it's a long process. I did my best to cram it into a video that wasn't too long. Like this was since my high school years, like it was. A long process of finding out what exactly I wanted and just getting there and putting in the work so 
I wanted to make this video to introduce the career side to my channel and yes you will see me on the journey <laughs> but um yeah so I'm planning a trip to Los Angeles in the next month and I will take y'all with me <laughs> it's going to be a very powerful trip I don't want it to be oh like going to the bars clubbing uh, like I want it to be very innocent and awakening. I'm going to be journaling on the beach and then also meeting my connection in LA for the first time and being thrown into that world of the industry. So I'll see y'all guys next time. Uh, like this video and comment what y'all thought about it. If you know I need to get better and telling stories, whatever, I can take the criticism. But let me know what y'all think so I can get better and sharing this side of my life with y'all. And yeah, I will see you guys next time and stay blessed. Bye.